The Dodd-Frank Financial Reform Act was passed in 2010 with regulations to go into effect starting in 2011 and the latest round of the Dodd-Frank Act has now made it impossible for private money lenders to lend money to anyone who wants to live in the house or anybody who already does live in the house. The majority of my business is lending to people who want to buy, fix up, and live in an amazingly low-priced home. The Dodd-Frank Act makes that impossible, and there's a very good chance I will lose my business. I've gone from 18 employees in November down to six employees, and my business is less than half of what it was before. Hard Money is a community lending program. We stay in our backyards. Our investors are retired people in the same neighborhood. We are lending money between one private individual and another private individual. We kept on lending during the crisis because we know our borrowers. We can drive by their houses because we live here. Hard money is a contract between two individuals who set their own terms, managed by a mortgage broker who's licensed and who makes sure that no laws are broken and that the proper disclosures are given and that the ability to repay requirements are met. Ability to repay is not bad. It's the other two qualifications that they put in there that made ability to repay an impossibility for owner occupants to get a private money loan. You can't make private money work the same way as institutional money because it's private investors willing to lend their money out to people who are able to save up 40%. Private money works because it uses common sense, because it's people like your neighbors who are willing to take a risk on a family who wants to buy a house, fix it up, and live in it for a few dollars per month. We believe that it's wrong for the government to deny investors the opportunity to lend their money and to deny buyers the right to borrow on that money on the term, terms and conditions that are acceptable to the investor and the buyer if that buyer wants to live in the house. We have been able to help so many families get houses for the past six years and they have been so grateful and excited. It's common sense. If you can save up 40% to buy a house, then you can probably make a $400 to $700 a month payment for a $40 to $70,000 loan and get it from a private investor. Actually, that isn't exactly true. If you're willing to go through a HUD-approved counseling class when you already know how to save up 30 to 40%, if you can find a private money lender that's willing to give you a loan, fully amortizing for as long as you need to pay it off completely without having a balloon, if you're willing to pay for two appraisals, and if your private money lender is willing to take the risk of being sued, then maybe you could get a private money loan. We aren't making huge amounts of loans, I agree. We aren't selling to Wall Street. We can't sell to Wall Street. We are requesting that private money or hard money be defined as any loan made by private investors who lend money to any borrower within their own state with the process managed by a licensed federal and state mortgage broker, which is compliant with all state and federal laws and which meets ability to repay requirements but does not exclude the ability to have a balloon at five years. Or we're requesting that the act be changed so that it excludes private money transactions and that the definition of a federally related loan be clarified within Dodd-Frank and RESPA and TILA to mean only loans that are funded by a government services enterprise like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, Ginnie Mae, USDA. Otherwise, Americans will lose the ability to borrow money from anyone except the GSEs. Thank you. Kareem Corden, Capella Mortgage, Las Vegas, Nevada, private money lender. In fact, I'm here with Eddie Martinez. He's a realtor here in Las Vegas, been a realtor for 12 years, and it's affecting him and all of his clients. So Eddie, 
Tell me, who are your clients? Oh, my, most of my clients are uh, Spanish-speaking clients, Latinos. Mm -hmm. Right. And they have been affected with this new law because they cannot live in the house. And they can't live in the house because I'm telling you, I can't make owner-occupied loans anymore. And there are reasons why in this video I've, I've talked about why I can't make an owner-occupied loan, but uh, these people... Uh, you know, to, to own a home, that's their dream, you know, mm -hmm. it's an American dream to own their home. Right. But uh, the thing is, they, some of them, they have bad credit and they cannot buy an FHA. But uh, like I say, this new law is affecting them because they, they want to live in the house. They want to own their own home. For example, today you brought me two clients, two families who were qualified last year to buy a home. Eddie's found them a home now. And what are we saying? Can they, yeah. buy, can they live in the home? Yeah, no, they say they, they cannot live in the home. Right. They have, I mean, that's why they, you know, I mean. So what are they going to do? The thing is they have to rent it out. They're going to have to rent the house out. Yeah. yeah. This is an example of Dodd-Frank hurting the American people and hurting the ordinary people because they could have had a house. They could be living in a house. Their kid could be playing in a yard. But no, now they have to stay in their apartment and they have to buy the house, which is good for them because they can buy it today's prices. But they have to rent it out to somebody else so somebody else can enjoy that house.